Today I'm going to be showing you seven techniques for using watercolor paint. The first one I'm going to be using is the rubber cement trick. Now put this, this rubber cement trick is where you put the rubber cement where you don't want paint. You want to try to draw a little pattern of whatever and wherever you put the rubber cement the paint will not touch. So once you rub the rubber cement off the paint will not be in that area. Something similar to that technique is a crayon. Uh, the crayon technique is really interesting as well. And I'm just going to draw a little heart. It's a really wonky heart, but it's okay. And then you just paint over it because you don't have to wait for uh, the heart to dry, unlike the rubber cement. Now, now what we what I like to call a flat is where you go once over. It's the same value over the entire painting. Now, there is one more, there is, um, I'm going to be using uh, a darker color for the next one, uh, which is called salt. Uh, the salt technique is uh, very hard for me to do. Uh, I'm going to be using black. Um, I'm going to put it right here. And then once we get that on there, we're going to uh, immediately, don't let that dry, sprinkle salt on the top and try not to make a mess. It Salt will get everywhere. Um, you just sprinkle it over the top, remove the excess around it, and then you let it dry completely. Now once it's dry completely, you'll see the different texture and uh, pattern color change around it. And it looks very interesting and like, I use it for tree, uh, whenever I do trees and watercolor, I'll put that on top of it and it looks like leaves. Um, now one thing to remember is that the watercolors dry lighter than, than they are. So when I put this on, it was darker, but now when the paint is drying, the water is drying onto there and it's going to be lighter. So the more times I paint over it, the darker it will become. Um, just like how I did this painting, um, this is supposed to be a mountain range. Uh, I chose blue because blue was my favorite color at the time. Um, <laughs> and as you, I just did, I put a light color for the background and then I did over it and over it. But all, once you go down, you have to go all the way down. Um, this is how I got this one darker than all the other ones. I just bit, went over it more times than the other. Uh, this, the background I did lighter. Um, which help make the sky. Now, in order to make the sky, <laughs> I would do a thing called lifting. Lifting um, is like making clouds. Um, these clouds, I just do very simply. I put a paint on the water color to however I want it. Go over it like that. And you make, you make a flat and then you take a paper towel, you water it up into a small little design, and then you just dab it however you want, and it just makes little cloud shapes. And I, it's very nice to make clouds, especially for your sky. It's so much easier instead of just trying to draw it out. Now, there's another way you can do flat um, lifting, and it's where you take a wet, clean brush and you do little designs like that. Now I'm going to be doing uh, red above here and we're just going to try um, lifting with that. And once this is a little drier we're going to try lifting with the wet brush and we'll see if that works. Now since our rubber cement is dry we're going to be painting over it. Now when we paint over it, there shouldn't be any water over the top. Now, when I do this, it's going to be a little messy and it's going to look a little weird because you're, it's going to feel weird as well because um, you're painting over rubber. But, as you can see, our design 
showed through and once this is dry you can just rub it off with your finger and there should be just white background. Now for our lifting off, you're just going to take a wet brush, small wet brush, you put it in the water and you can draw little designs with it. It's kind of like erasing the color. Um, you just go over it a couple times here and there and you can do all kinds of shapes. You just clean it off every minute or so. You just do all kinds of stuff with it and it's really cool. <laughs> but um, there, there's a lot of different techniques out there. I'm just going to show you the most common ones. Uh, my, fa my favorite uh, technique I like to do is called scruffito. Um, it's where you take something with a sharp point and scratch a design into your paper. Now I'm going to be using pointed scissors because I don't seem to have safety pins or push pins anywhere. So I'm just going to scratch a little design here. And I'm going to say, I don't want, it's kind of like a secret message in a way, because when you scratch it on there, it's going to be really hard to see. And, um, but once you get it on there, it's like really cool. Um, it, it should seep into the scratch. Um, so once you, once you get your scratch painted on, uh, scratched on there, um, you just paint over it. Now when you paint over it, the paint should seep into what you scratched, darker to what you did. There we go. It's darker, looks good, you can see, you can tell what it says, 4-H rocks, and it does. It's so much fun. Um, now the next one I'm going to be doing is um, alcohol, like rubber, rubbing alcohol. Uh, the rubbing alcohol technique is where you paint a flat and you just um, put rubbing alcohol on it. Very simple. It's kind of like lifting. Um, just a little different. Um, it's a little different by... Because um, it spreads out the colors more. Um, now, when I used the small brush, I did test something with it earlier. I had rubbing alcohol on it. That's probably why it looks like that. Um, but when you put the rubbing al alcohol on it, I'm going to let it dry for a, few, uh, a minute uh, <laughs> and then uh, show you what I did. Give you a couple hints and tips of, of watercolor. Now watercolor, it's one thing um, to have a cup of water, but always keep that cup of water clean. Uh, that cup of water will help when it's clean, it'll help with vibrant colors. Um, you'll get like a very, very pretty pink or purple and orange. And when it's all, when you have a very dirty cup of water, it'll become muddy colors. And muddy colors are not great. They ruin your paint, which is why some of this is like that. Water uh, smeared into it and ruin the colors. Which is why I don't use them all that much, because it ruins it. It's not the color you want. Now, the rub rubbing alcohol, I'm going to use a straw, the end of a straw. I'm going to dip it into 91% rubbing alcohol, and I'm just going to dab it. And it should, if it dried too quickly, it may have dried, um, <laughs> and spread out the colors. Might just need to try this again real fast. Um, let's see. Let's see if it works. If it, I've never done it. I've never really used rubbing alcohol. Might need, just need to paint over it. There we go. Let that dry for a minute. Get some of the water out. And then, <coughs> then, once you get the flat painted on there, it's not that flat, honestly, but I mean, once you get it on there, uh, you take the rubbing alcohol dab it on there and it should spread out like this. Super pretty. Do all kinds of designs with it. Um, I usually do just circles on it. It just makes much, it's much easier that way. Um, it, if I want to clean this up, I just take a dry clean brush. It doesn't look clean, but it's dry. Um, and you just take it, go over all the wet paint and just dry it off, dab it, and boom. You can see where I put all the rubbing alcohol before. Um, now the next one I'm going to be doing is 
Oh, what's it called? <laughs> Fading. Fading is very simple. This is where you put in your brush once and you don't put it in the paint again. Um, this, I'm gonna, for this one I'm gonna be using like a, I don't know, green? Is it green? Yeah. Um, I'm gonna be using this green and we're just gonna fade it out. We're gonna get as much paint as possible and then we're gonna dip it in the water, dab it just a little bit, and we're just gonna go once, twice, three times, four. As you can see, it fades out. Now I'm gonna dry off the water. Now it looks like a flat. Now, if I want this to be darker, I use a dry brush uh, in, in the wet paint. I use a dry brush. Now, whenever, whenever I do this, it becomes darker. And it should fade out to white, as you can see. Now, once that is done, uh, once this is done, I scrape off all the rubber cement with my finger, and we'll show you what that looks like. And it, see? It's getting all of the rubber cement off, and you can start seeing the white. It's going to be a little sticky, and it is very sticky, but once it's all complete, it looks really cool. Now, this rub, the salt, I am not that good at salt, but... Um, it should have a missing piece to it, so I'm going to take all this salt off, and we're going to dump it into our trash, because no one wants weird looking salt, right? Now, if I show you up a little close, it's going to have this little blanket space. Now, I did this earlier, and this is what I got for salt. It just looks like little polka dots. It is really cool. Um, again, I use it for trees. Um, it's a lot easier. But these are the techniques that I've done. The most common and they're very easy to do. And I hope you've enjoyed this video. For I hope it was informational. Informational? Sorry, I can't speak. And I hope you enjoy the rest of your quarantine.